Hello. One of the most common questions and comments that I receive here on YouTube is, what have I done to my face? And the short answer is, Botox in my 11s and my marionette lines every six months, last filler 2017. So I thought it would be fun to do a little bit of a deeper dive into my Botox treatment history and share with you my 16 years receiving Botox. So I have a lot of experience to share with you. If that sounds interesting to you, I would love it if you would throw this video a thumbs up. That really, really does help support my channel and I really appreciate it. So without further ado, let's jump right into it. I am going to put my glasses on because I have a lot of notes and I don't want to forget anything. First, I want to say I am not here to tell anyone to do Botox. I am not here to encourage anyone to do Botox. It is a very, very personal decision. I have friends that love Botox. I have friends that wouldn't touch a needle with a 10 foot pole. It's all good. We all have to make decisions that we feel comfortable with. Having said that, even if you're not interested in having these types of treatments, sometimes it's just really interesting to learn more about it. So I am gonna start with some general information about Botox and then I will jump into my treatment history and how the, treat, the Botox treatment that I was receiving at age 40 changed in my 50s and again has changed now that I am in my 60s. Okay, so general information about Botox. I've known that Botox has medical uses and I've known that for quite a while. I know Botox is used to treat spasticity in children and adults with cerebral palsy. It is used to treat migraines. It is used to treat TMJ. What I didn't realize until I started researching for this video, it has been in use medically since the 1970s. That's a long treatment history, right? Botox was not approved for cosmetic purposes until 2001. And in the last 20 years since Botox was approved for cosmetic use, it has remained the number one most popular cosmetic treatment. And currently I think we're at around 7 million Americans do a Botox treatment every year. That's amazing, that sort of blew my mind. How does Botox work? I think there's a lot of misunderstanding about Botox. It doesn't paralyze your face, it doesn't freeze your face. Botox is a neuromodulator, and there are other neuromodulators. There's one called Dysport or Dysport, and there's one called Xeomin. I personally only have had experience with Botox, so I am gonna be saying Botox throughout this video, um, but much of this information will apply to those other neuromodulators at all, as well. All right, so very, very basic Botox information. So Botox is a neurotransmitter and it binds to the endings of the nerve and it reduces the stimulation to the muscle. So it sort of provides a little bit of a barrier between the nerve and the muscle. So if you do a small dosage of Botox, you're gonna have a little bit of a relaxation. And if you do a larger Botox dose of Botox, you're gonna have more relaxation, okay? So it relaxes, it doesn't paralyze. It's dose dependent and it's localized. When you inject Botox into a muscle, it stays in that muscle. So what does Botox actually do for us cosmetically? And what does Botox actually not help with? Botox can relax what's called our dynamic wrinkles. So when I say dynamic wrinkles, I mean, you know, forehead lines from raising your forehead, um, 11s from, you know, frowning, squinting, smile lines, crow's feet from squinting or smiling, that type of thing, okay? So Botox relaxes the dynamic wrinkles and it can prevent and delay static wrinkles from becoming very deeply etched into your face. What Botox cannot do is it does not improve the quality of your skin. It doesn't improve the texture or the quality of your skin. It doesn't improve sun damage. It has no effect on pigmentation. It does not build collagen. Again, Botox does not take the place of skincare. It does not take the place of a healthy diet. It does not take the place of sun protection. It simply relaxes the muscles to soften those dynamic wrinkles. Botox is temporary. They say Botox will wear off anywhere from three to five to six months. Now there are some contraindications with Botox and that's why it's important to go to a qualified medical professional because they do need to take a health history 
There are certain medications that may be contraindicated with Botox. Certainly, you want to look for allergies. Certainly, don't get Botox if you're pregnant or nursing. So it's really important to go to a provider who will do a medical history and make sure that Botox works with your particular medical history. So potential side effects are pretty minimal. There might be some bruising, very minimal. It's a teeny, teeny, tiny needle. Um, you know, pain, I don't think the Botox injections hurt at all. It's just, it's not even like a bee sting. It's more like a mosquito bite. Um, the side effect that's probably the most common and the most unpleasant is if you get Botox in the wrong place or at too high of a dose, it can alter or disrupt or drop your facial features. And by that I mean if you get too much Botox in your forehead, for instance, it can drop your eyebrows and we don't want that, right? It can make you look funny. It can give you a hooded lid. And so because of potential side effects, it is really, really, really important to find a provider that is not only experienced, but has good technical skill, an artistic eye, and maybe even most important of all, an excellent communicator who will ask you, you know, what, what are your goals? What do you want to accomplish? and really, really work with you to give you a Botox treatment customized to exactly what your goals are. And I was lucky enough to find that person right off the bat 16 years ago. Her name is Polly. She's always asked me, okay, what bothers you? My first few treatments, like I didn't want that sort of stressed out, angry look with the 11s. Like I said, I was 45. I was a single mother, I had a teenage daughter, I had a very demanding, stressful job, and I just started to feel like I looked stressed and angry all the time. I was getting tension headaches, so the very first time I went and got Botox, I shared with her, I just don't wanna look stressed and angry, and I was concerned about the 11s because that was really the main area of treatment at that time. So she gave me a light, you know, I can't remember how many units, she treated my 11s, and actually my eyebrows have always, always been uneven. One side of my face, the muscles are just much, much stronger than the other side of my face. So my right eyebrow is always way higher than my left eyebrow. And so she was able to sort of even out the eyebrows by putting just a little bit of Botox right here on the left eyebrow, which raised it up. You know, they're still not twins, but she can help me achieve a little tiny bit more symmetry in my face. Botox does take 7 to 14 days to take effect, so you don't see the effects right away. So after a couple of weeks, I looked in the mirror and I just felt like I looked so much more rested, so much less stressed. I was absolutely sold. I absolutely loved how it made me look and I loved how it made me feel because I really think that there's some sort of a biofeedback by relaxing those stress muscles in your face. I do believe there is some sort of a biofeedback. I actually started to experience fewer and fewer stress headaches because I was relaxing my stress muscles, right? Anyway, that's all I really did in my 40s. A little bit in my 11s, a little bit to even out my eyebrows, and that took me through my late 40s. Now, when I turned about 50, I started to freak out about the aging process and I started to be pretty self-critical, right? And of course, at the very same time, I was definitely aging. I was definitely seeing more and more signs of aging. So um, especially the jowls, the lips, the neck. And so um, throughout, you know, every six months meeting with Polly, at one point she injected my platysmus muscles in my neck. The neck muscles become stronger over time. And so when the neck muscles overactivate, they can actually pull the jowls down, right? So by relaxing the neck muscles, she was able to soften my jowls. And so that worked for several years until it didn't work anymore, and we'll get to that in a minute. And then I was noticing those lip lines, upper lip lines, the so-called smoker's lines. So she would put just a little tiny bit of Botox in my upper lip line. Now, I did that on and off for a couple of years. It did soften the lip lines. It didn't make my lips look weird, but it didn't last very long. That would only last like six weeks, and I just didn't want to go back every six weeks or eight weeks to get more Botox in my lip. 
what else did I do? Oh, I remember. So even though I said I have been going to Polly for 16 years, for about 10 years ago, I had one little experience venturing away from Polly. There was some sort of really amazing sale that a clinic near my house was advertising and the Botox was super, super, super cheap, like half price. So I thought, well, why not? It looks like a great clinic, great reviews. So I made an appointment, I went in, they upsold me so hard. You know, Polly never suggested, oh, you should do Botox here or here. She always asked me what I wanted and then helped me achieve the goal. When I went to this clinic, she said, oh, you need Botox in your crow's feet. You need Botox here. She tried to sell me product. It was a pretty heavy upsell. So even though the Botox itself was much cheaper than what I pay for at my other clinic, I wound up spending more money and being much less happy with the results because I sort of let myself be talked into Botox that I didn't really want or need. And that was my one experience with having Botox in my crow's feet. You know, and what I learned from that, aside from the fact I'm going to stick with Polly because she meets all the criteria um, and I trust her and she communicates clearly with me. But what I learned from that is I... I'm not bothered by happy lines. I like smile lines. Smile lines are happy lines. And so when I got my crow's feet done, I felt like I looked a little bit strange. Now, that could have been an injector technique. I don't know. But I felt like there was a little bit, I felt like it was sort of strange to be smiling and not have any lines, right? And I almost felt like there was a little shelf on my upper cheekbone that sort of came up with that treatment. Now, luckily, Botox is temporary, so it always wears off, but that was the one and the only time I treated my crow's feet because, like I said, my goal with Botox is to look refreshed, rested, and natural, right? And so I'm not trying to erase every single movement or line from my face. I want expression. I just want to look relaxed and happy, okay? So some people do like to get their crow's feet done. That's fine. It's just not my personal preference. Um, so I have told you about the 11s. Um, you can raise your forehead, not your forehead. You can raise your eyebrows a little bit by getting a little injection right there. Um, I've told you about my neck. What happened with the neck over time as I got more and more laxity in my skin, those Botox injections just didn't work anymore. So I stopped doing the neck injections probably about mid 50s. So I did those neck injections for probably about four or five years. It just doesn't work anymore because now it's not about the muscle pulling my face down. It's just about the facial laxity, right? And the face is just falling a little bit. The other thing that I am noticing as I grow older you know, as each of these signs of aging presents itself and I notice it for the first time, I look in the mirror and I go, oh, what is that? What can I do about that? And then over time, I get used to it, right? Over time, it becomes part of my identity to have laugh lines. It becomes part of my identity to have, well, I don't want to say the jowls are part of my identity, but I get used to it and it doesn't bother me as much anymore, okay? Um, let's see what else have I done with Botox. So I've talked about the 11s, the eyebrows, marionettes. The marionette lines are created by a muscle called depressor angularis, right? And this muscle, again, overactivates and gets stronger as we get older and it pulls the corners of our mouth down, giving us a little bit of an unhappy appearance. And it also can create these marionette lines. So for the last few years, I have had Botox injections in this muscle called the depressor angularis. The typical dose for the um, depressor angularis is two to five units per side. And I get two units on my left side and three units on my right side because again, the right side of my face is much stronger. And I really think that that does soften the marionette lines very, very subtly. But more importantly, it prevents or minimizes the downward turn of the corners of the mouth, which can give us an unhappy appearance even when we're not unhappy. So again, my goal with Botox is to look relaxed and happy and not stressed and unhappy. 
did I cover everything? Oh, forehead lines. So for many years I wore bangs so my forehead lines did not bother me. And then around my early 50s I started noticing forehead lines pretty significantly. So I did have very, very light Botox and when you try to treat the forehead lines, like I said, there's a risk of dropping the eyebrows. My eyes have already been sort of hooded throughout my life so I didn't want to risk that. So in partnering with Polly, we went very, very, very lightly it's up here at the hairline to soften the forehead lines. And I did like that for a few years. But as I've gotten older, and I am now 61, my skin has more laxity overall. And so what I notice is that my forehead, even though my eyebrows didn't drop, because my forehead skin is a little bit looser, a little bit more lax, that Botox gave my forehead almost sort of a waxy appearance. So this last time, six weeks ago, when I went to see Polly, I said, I think I don't, I'm not going to do forehead Botox anymore. I'd rather have the lines than have my forehead look sort of strangely waxy. So again, I no longer do the forehead Botox. So six weeks ago, when I had my most recent Botox treatment, I got fewer Botox units than I had ever had before because as I've said, I've tried some of these other treatments and I've discontinued them. No longer doing the neck, no longer doing the lips, definitely don't do the crow's feet, don't do the forehead. So this is what we did. According to my research, the typical dosages to treat the 11s or to treat the glabular complex is anywhere from 10 to 40 units, right? So the glabular complex, and that's usually five injections. So what she did for me six weeks ago to treat my glabellar complex, she did three injections. She did three units there, three units there, and three units there. So that's nine units compared to the standard 10 to 40. And then I wanted this eyebrow raised up just a little bit. So she did um, four units here and three units here. And that's just to give the eyebrow a little bit of an elevation to help with the hooding. And then we treated the marionettes. Uh, let's see, my right side is my strongest. So she did four units right there and three units right there. So that's a total of 21 units. So I've literally cut my Botox unit dosages in half, even though I'm quite a bit older. And part of that, like I think I said earlier, part of that is just being more and more comfortable with my aging process. You know, I think it takes a while to get used to the new you, right? As all these signs of aging occur, our first reaction is, oh no, what am I going to do about that? But then over time, you know, it becomes part of your self-identity. And I have to say, being here on YouTube, and sharing our concerns with each other and knowing that we're part of this over 50, over 60, over 70 community has just really, really helped me accept where I am at in, in just such a huge way. Okay, to summarize, you know, we're all gonna get older, we're all gonna get wrinkles, whether we use Botox or whatever, our aging process will continue. And I do want to age gratefully and gracefully and healthfully and take care of my health and take care of my skin and do my skincare and my sunscreen and all of that. And I really do feel like Botox has been very helpful as a tool to achieve those goals. So I would love to hear what your thoughts are on Botox. Have you had treatments? Have you had positive experiences? Have you had negative experiences? Again, I am not here to sell anybody Botox or encourage or push anyone to do Botox. I think that we are all following our own path and we can support each other and encourage each other and respect each other's um, decisions. Okay, I think I covered it. Thank you for hanging in there with me once again. I always really, really, really appreciate your time. Thank you very much. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope you found it helpful. I look forward to the comments and the discussions in the comment box. You guys have been so amazingly wonderful. I mean, this community has grown. I am so grateful for every single subscriber, 
viewer and commenter. Thank you, thank you, thank you. As grateful as I am for every view and every comment, I do want to let you know that I am not able to keep up with responding to every single comment anymore. I read every single comment. I appreciate every single comment. Um, and for the first couple of hours Sunday morning after the video goes live, I do try to be as interactive as possible because I want you guys to know I appreciate you and I love the engagement that we have in the comment section. So keep the comments coming. I do read them, I do appreciate them, and I appreciate you. With all that being said, I hope you have a beautiful Sunday and a wonderful week, and I look forward to seeing you in my video next Sunday. Thank you, bye. On you, do I have a fuzz in my eye? Do I have a fuzz in my eye? One of the, hmm, okay. So Botox can do, Botox can treat some, okay. Long answer is I'm here to do. Okay, long answer. Okay, I don't know if I'm going to say that. I did. I had a fuzz in my eye.